Happy Wednesday. This is your Power Hour update for July 14th, 2021. And there's a lot of news and earnings to cover, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to the Tip Ranks YouTube channel. I'm Richard Allen. This is your Power Hour update for Wednesday, July 14th, 2021. I hope you guys are all doing great. I'm back ready for another video and there's a ton of news to cover today so we're going to jump right over to tipranks.com and cover the major indices first we have the s p 500 up 0.2 percent today followed by the dow jones up 0.14 percent today and the nasdaq inching close to 15,000 again up 0.29 percent on the day and then bitcoin's having a great day as well inching towards 33,000 per coin up 0.46 percent on the day and then of course we'll cover the top losers and gainers at the end here but first we're gonna cover broadcom ending their SAS acquisition talks. Now, Broadcom recently was indicted by the FTC for monopolizing the semiconductor chips used for television and broadband internet services. And even though that's going on right now, Credit Suisse analyst John Pitzer reiterated a buy rating on the stock with a price target of $580, implying a 19.8% upside potential to current values. However, despite expecting the settlement with the FTC to have no material impact on Broadcom's financials, he offered a cautious outlook for the company. He said, we see significant consolidation, slowing supply growth, and performance-hungry workloads, especially around AI shifting the balance of ASP power towards semis or semiconductors. Now, this Broadcom deal, they were in talks to acquire SAS, which is a analytics software company, for 15 to $20 billion, and they're not doing that anymore. Um, so this would have strengthened their software business, which contributes 27% of total revenues for Broadcom. Let's check how Broadcom is doing right now. Their ticker symbol there is AV. GO. They are down a little bit on the day, down 0.22% on the day. However, this does come with a strong buy rating based on 19 analyst ratings with an average upside of 12.59% for Broadcom. Now, in other news, we have L Brands dropping 2% in extended trading session on Tuesday after, after it announced the commencement of an underwritten secondary offering of 20 million new shares of its common stock. The company does not seek to receive any proceeds from the sales of the shares in the offering. Upon closing of the offering, L Brands will be repurchasing up to 10 million shares of its common stock from one of the selling stockholders. The repurchase price will be equal to the public offering price, less the underwriting discount. So very similar to any sort of offering we've seen. Let's check how ticker symbol LB or L Brands is doing today. They're actually up on this news. They're up point or 2.63 percent rather uh, coming in with a moderate buy based on 17 analyst ratings with an average upside of almost six percent for l brands in in other news i want to cover what jerome powell the chairman of the fed had said today and i think it's important for you guys to know what's going on with the broader economy how jerome powell feels about unemployment and inflation and things like that so we're going to cover just a couple key points of what he said real quick uh federal reserve chairman jerome powell said wednesday the economy is a ways off from where it needs to be for the central bank to change policy meaning raise interest rates, uh, stop buying debt, things like that. Conditions in the labor, labor market have continued to improve, but there is still a long way to go, he said, adding that inflation has increased notably due mostly to temporary factors. So those are both things that are really important to note. All right, in other news, we're going to cover earnings. We're going to cover Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and of course, Delta Airlines all reported earnings today. So we're going to cover that here in a second before jumping into your top losers and gainers in the market. Now, Wells Fargo earnings beat forecast and lending actually declined. Now, Wells Fargo posted a second quarter profit of $1.38 per share as revenue jumped 11% from a year earlier to $20.3 billion dollars soundly beating Wall Street's expectations despite weak demand for loans. 
Analyst expected earnings per share of 98 cents for the second quarter with revenue of 17.77 billion. So they blew out these numbers for sure. Now, how is Wells Fargo ticker symbol WFC doing today? 3.7% up as the recording of this video, coming in with a moderate buy based on 18 analyst ratings with an average upside of almost 10% for Wells Fargo. All right. Another banking company, we have Citigroup beating estimates as well. They had earnings of 285 a share, topping the 196 estimate of analysts surveyed. And they also beat their revenue expectations by 0.25 billion dollars. Let's see how ticker symbol C or Citigroup is doing today. They're actually down slightly on this news. I think they were hoping for a little bit uh, better of revenue numbers. Uh, they're down 0.86 percent today. However, this does come in with a strong buy based on 12 analyst ratings with an average upside of almost 32 percent for Citigroup. All right. Delta Airlines, I was on a couple of Delta flights lately. Uh, Wall Street expected Delta to narrow their per share losses to $1.38 a share from $4.43 an early a year ago. Um, they lost a ton of money last year. Revenue was expected to jump 323% from a year earlier to $6.2 billion. Here's what happened. They actually beat those estimates by quite a bit. Delta lost $1.07 a share adjusted with revenue up $7.13 billion. The Atlanta-based carrier reported a pre-tax profit of $652 million, ending a five-quarter string of losses and generating positive cash flow for the first time in over a year. So pretty cool stuff there. Let's see how ticker symbol DAL or Delta Airlines is doing. They're actually down on this news 1.33% today. However, take a peek at this. Strong buy, 11 analyst ratings with an average upside of almost 47% for Delta Airlines. Guys, let me know how you feel about Delta Airlines. I think, it, for me, definitely one of the best uh, airline carrier, carriers that I fly on. I really, really like Delta Airlines. All right, let's jump over to your top losers and gainers in the market today. In the number five spot for biggest losers, we have Recursion Pharmaceuticals, ticker symbol RXRX, down almost 15% on the day. Pure Cycle Technologies, ticker symbol PCT, down 13.5% on the day. OLO, that's the same as the ticker symbol and the name of the company, down 12% today. Upwork, tip, ticker symbol UPWK, down 13% on the day. And Glaucos, a ticker symbol GKOS, down over 20% on the day. All right, top gainers, we have Covanta Holding, ticker symbol CVA, up 7% on the day. Apollo Medical Holdings in the fourth spot, ticker symbol AMEH, up almost 10% on the day. And then we have TFI International, ticker symbol TFII, up 8.3% on the day, followed by G Medical Innovation Holdings, and ticker symbol there is GMVD, up almost 10% on the day. And then rounding out your top five, Compass Minerals International, ticker symbol CMP, up over 13% on the day. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for another Power Hour update. You will see me later on for another video. If you aren't subscribed already, please do that. We're doing a giveaway for 25,000 subscribers, and I would love, love for you to be a part of that. So check that out in our community tab. Guys, thank you so much. I will see you later on and obviously tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for your Power Hour update tomorrow. Take care.